In the second part of this lecture, we will continue learning about learning theories. There are several needs theories that attempt to explain motivation. Collectively, these theories suggest that the deficiencies or needs that we experience motivate us to behave in certain ways, in ways that satisfy these needs. Examples of needs include achievement, self-fulfillment, power, affiliation. These theories also suggest that people vary in their needs and that different situations trigger different needs. Trainers should attempt to understand learners' needs and design training to address them, give them options to choose from different training programs or to choose from different assignments. Trainers should also take the time to explain why a training program will provide value, what the trainees will get from it. What kinds of needs matter to the learning process? In this graphic, we can see three different theories and the total of 11 different needs that they highlight. Any one theory isn't necessarily better than the other. The important point is that there are many different needs that we need to think about and remember that everyone varies in the needs that are motivating them in any given situation. Physiological needs include necessities like air, food, and sleep. Safety needs include the feeling of security and being safe from dangerous situations, from fearful situations. Social needs include friendship, affection, love. Esteem needs include the feeling of achievement, of accomplishment. And the final need is self-actualization, a need that Maslow predicted very few people would be able to fulfill. Self-actualization is like self-fulfillment, the need to become the best version of yourself to become all that you can be. Alderfer's model is similar to Maslow's model, but McClellan's includes a need that the other two does not, power. The main idea with the needs theories is that trainers and managers need to find out more about what people need from their work and from their development opportunities, and then do their best to try to meet those needs. Of course, it isn't going to be possible for every single person all of the time, but it sort of comes with the job, trying to meet people's needs in the best way that you can. Expectancy theory suggests that motivation is impacted by people's perceptions of the situation. First, they need to believe that they can learn to perform some task, what we call expectancy. They expect to be able to do something. Like reinforcement theory, this theory suggests that people should value the outcome attached to the behavior in order for it to have any motivating power. We call this valence, the degree to which someone values an outcome. And third is instrumentality. They need to believe that their performance is instrumental to receiving the reward. In some situations, people can get the reward without actually having to do the behavior. In training situations, we need to make sure that the behavior is closely tied to the outcome. If trainees' perceptions are lacking in any one of these areas, their motivation may suffer. Trainers are tasked then with enhancing trainees' self-efficacy, choosing valued rewards, and linking performance with those rewards. Adult learning theory is a newer theory that attempts to explain how adults learn. It suggests that we have a need to know why and a need to drive our own learning process. It also suggests that adults are different from children in that they bring a problem-centered approach to the learning environment and they bring with them their unique work experiences. Children don't usually have work experiences that they can draw upon when learning new material. 
Finally, this theory suggests that adults are motivated both internally and externally. Years ago, it was thought that only money motivated. Today, we know that there are all kinds of internal processes that motivate people as well. The need to achieve, the need to fulfill one's potential, for example, might motivate people to learn. Adult learning theory then has several implications for training and development specialists. They should design training programs based on the learner's interests and competencies, not on the trainer's interests. They should take a more problem-centered approach as opposed to a subject-centered approach. This might involve more application-based assignments as opposed to relying on lectures. Trainers should take advantage of trainees' past experiences. Ask them questions, ask them to share their experiences, ask them to share lessons learned, ask them to share some of the challenges they faced. Other learners can learn from trainees who share their past experiences. Trainers should also make sure that trainees have an immediate opportunity to practice. Don't wait until they return to the work environment to have them practice. Make sure they practice in the learning event. The final learning theory that we're going to cover is information processing theory, which attempts to explain the internal processes that influence learning. Information processing theory likens the human mind to a computer. It suggests that information is taken in by the senses and then undergoes several transformations as the information moves from the senses to short-term memory and then to long-term memory. Then the mind organizes a response. The environment via feedback and reinforcement also plays a role in this process. To encourage information processing, try these strategies. Establish expectations up front by communicating the learning objectives and outcomes at the beginning of training. Help trainees commit training content to their memory with meaningful content. Make sure it has some relevance to their jobs. Use visuals like pictures, diagrams, maps to explain concepts. Demonstrate behaviors and procedures and use verbal instructions to help people organize the information they're trying to learn. Together, all of these learning theories from part one and part two inform how we design and facilitate training programs. Think of each theory as a tool in your toolkit. The more tools you have, the more prepared you are for any training situation. 